Hello everyone, my name is Roger Stromkowski and I'm a solutions engineer here at SnapLogic. Today I want to talk to you about working with project permissions, especially in light of the recent COVID pandemic uh, that we're all going through working remotely. Uh, this is something that might help those of you who are using SnapLogic or thinking of using SnapLogic understand how you can share your projects fo folders, share your assets, and collaborate with your peers without being in the same office. Um, so let's go ahead and jump into Firefox here and walk through this. So you will need to be an org administrator to make these changes that we're going to talk about today. So let's make sure we get that out of the way there. Now in the manager tab is where we would be. We'd be looking at users and groups. These are the two main places we would go. And the final place to actually make, you know, that's where we're going to set up the users and groups. But when it actually comes to modifying the permissions, that's where we would be working, say, in a project folder like this. And we click on that arrow that shows up to the right. If I do, do that again real quick, a little slower, click on that arrow, go to permissions. And this is where we can see what permissions exist out there for a given folder. Now, adding a user or group occurs down here, and then we would set the permissions. So we're going to go through all, all that in a moment. The very first thing we want to do is I'm going to come back up to the top. Let's go to groups. Now, you know, let's pretend for a second here that I'm trying to work with my colleagues and we're on a small team so we're going to we're going to see if there's a group named velocity um or the org administrator is going to do this for us right just keep that in mind and so there's no, currently no group named velocity right velocity right and that's a great name for just a small uh fast moving team so let's go ahead and just add this in right and then we create that now, once the group exists, you'll see it shows up in search, and then we can just click on the name. Now, adding new users is pretty easy. We just hit that plus sign or hit a couple of them, and then I can start looking for the user that I want to add to the group. And let's say I want to add my colleague, and let's say I have a third colleague I want to add, and his name doesn't show up. His or her name doesn't show up. So what does that mean? Well, that means that the user doesn't exist in snap logic at all or doesn't exist in this organization so the next step for the org administrator would be to go to the user section and add that so i'm going to go ahead and save what i have here which is these two and let's walk through that new user piece real quick just so that it can be captured here in this video as well okay so my edit was successful so let's go to users and um <clears throat> if we wanted to add a new one it's just this plus sign over here and let's say we just want to add Bob Smith at somewhere.com. Okay, we want him to have his own project folder that allows him to create his own work for development. Uh, let's go ahead and hit add. And as soon as we hit the add button, you'll see this is the last and final stage for creating a user. You'll give him the first name, last name, and then you can go through the settings that are down below. Uh, sending notification emails is recommended. That's how they get the password reset. Uh, disable password SSO, uh, login is used for people who have SSO and they only want their users to be able to do SSO. And then the other ones I think are fairly self-explanatory. If it is a service account, uh, there is a chance that it can log into SnapLogic, but it won't be able to do much else. It's really designed for running trigger tasks, um, as it says below. And then this determines whether or not to allow that person UI access. So the reason you would create an account without UI access is the same as a service account. It just allows that person to be able to execute tasks. All right, so that's the new user. So now let's jump through the final piece and let's come down to my folder. Let's go to permissions. Now this time what we're gonna do is we're gonna search for that velocity group and we can see it right there. We've got it in parentheses indicating to you that it is a group, so I select it. Now if I want them to be able to work with all my assets, add assets, execute the assets, you know, basically be a co-developer with me, then I would need to give them full access. And then we would hit share and save so if you just do that and then hit done, it's not going to last. It's not going to stick. So we need to hit share and save here and then just kind of hang tight a second. And then we'll see velocity show up and that's it for adding a user to users to a group and then adding the group to a folder. Thank you for watching. And I hope you have a fantastic day.